Satim Seke, a catola mato, baby, baby, baby. I like to have a, a purpose. I, I enjoy working. It's a craft that I'm very happy to pass along to uh, other people. About three or four years ago, I was introduced to Anna Keys, who is from Mizuzu, Malawi. She talked to me about starting a vocational school on the campus of her school that she had started there. Anna is a very dynamic uh, woman, very uh, interested in rebuilding her country, particularly the community that she came from. Malawi has been hit very hard by the AIDS epidemic. And so there are lots of children that have either one parent or no parents. Their opportunities are, are pretty limited. That's part of why I'm trying to develop a, a thriving uh, furniture business to be able to export to other richer African countries and um, bring money back into their community. Mizuzu is at about 4,000 feet, so um, elevation. So the, it's fairly dry. Um, and in terms of the countryside, it's quite open and reminds me of kind of some Western states in this country. Um, there are some beautiful mountains that are kind of off in the distance. The people in Mizuzu are very friendly, very open, welcoming. Uh, I've been invited to people's homes. They're interested in what my life is like here. There is certainly the aspect of all Westerners have tons and tons of money and it's limitless, um, which turns out not to be true. Somebody who has a reasonably good job that's very stable will make somewhere between maybe 120 a month, which seems like, well, there's, you know, maybe the economy is less there, but gas costs just the same. It's a, it's a big luxury to, to have a car. I eat lunch with the staff there. They cook, their, their typical meal is insima, which is a corn flour that's cooked into a very thick paste. And that's, that's the base. And then there's um, tomato and then like a Swiss chard type thing. And then they deep fry these small fish. And so we, they cook all of that over an open fire, uh, dipping the sima into the tomato paste and the vegetables. It's, and it's all off of one or two communal plates. And um, I, it's very nice, very, it, it feels, like you're being welcomed into a community. The very first project we made last year was a workbench and then a tool cabinet and then a small bookcase uh, to keep these books that I, reference books that I brought over. And this year in the new shop, we needed more bench space and more tool cabinets and a desk for the office. We just kept running out of projects. They, it's just amazing to have so many enthusiastic students just wanting to just keep working more and more and more. I had them come up with some small project that they would want to take home with them. They were um, very surprised and they were just happy to make the things and then uh, very enthusiastic to take them home. When I first went over there, I brought 200 pounds of tools packed in three or four suitcases. And when I went back this year, I brought another 200 pounds of tools. They don't have high quality tools available there. So I bring over good tools and sharpening stones and files and all sorts of things that make it possible to maintain the tools there. I've done quite a bit of fundraising, cover my plane fare, and the expense of the tools and helping buy materials when I'm there. It, it's certainly, it, 
it does feel like a drop in the bucket sometimes. You can get overwhelmed by the need, but being overwhelmed doesn't help. The takeaway lesson that I learned from this situation and, and being aware that there, there's lots of need all over the place, if you're willing to make a personal connection with people or a place, um, you don't have to worry about solving every problem, biting off as much as you can chew, and um, yeah, just uh, give till it hurts. <laughs>